Hi everybody, welcome back. Democracy 3, we're back. We're, uh, we're leading Canada. We haven't actually done any leading. I spent the entire last episode explaining how the hell things work because it's a very complicated game. Uh, you're more than welcome to play along if you own this game uh, and you want to make uh, a ton of bad decisions as I'm about to do. Uh, I spent last episode explaining how all these balls work and how we're going to uh, sort of balance things out and stuff, uh, which leaves us with 26 points to work with on this term. It's our first three months in August office out of a five-year term. Uh, my god, at this rate, it's going to be uh, forever before we get to the end of our term. But once we actually start putting policies in place and adjusting things and stuff like that, uh, things will things will go a little bit quicker. Uh, so let's get to it straight away. Uh, we've got capitalists, we've got the religious, uh, environmentalists, middle income, wealthy, and conservatives all uh, pretty mad with us. Everybody else is bordering between uh, sort of liking us and, uh, and, and heading towards uh, kind of hating us. We need to start uh, tackling some of these issues. Uh, this rail strike is going to be having a negative influence on our GDP, uh, which is not the best. And, uh, well, most of these will, actually. I think, uh, all in all, most of these affect either health or the GDP, which are two things that we would definitely like to prop up so that we can start making money and stuff. Uh, first things first, we probably want to uh, get in with uh, the religious faction and also the conservatives in some way, shape, or form. We don't want to leave them too angry with us uh, because... They will actually start uh, bombing us. They will park cars in front of Parliament with bombs in them and they'll start blowing us up. Because that's what happens in this game when people get very mad at you. Uh, they start terrorizing you uh, with bombs. And that's not what we want. So, uh, it looks like this abortion law here is the, uh, is the key contributor to uh, religious and conservative dissatisfaction. So, we can click on the abortion law and we can see why it is that it's having such a negative uh, impact. We've got old Sarah Patel here. Of course, uh, this is uh, Gary Patel's mother, little Gary Patel. Uh, she is the minister of, uh, what was this? What section was this again? Public services. She's our public services minister, Sarah Patel. Look at this. She's got this sort of like two-tone hair. It's like all dark gray at the top. Uh, and then it's like light gray at the back. Sort of like Storm, the superhero from X-Men. I don't know if you remember a Storm from X-Men, but it, it could just be that Storm is actually indeed Sarah Patel. Uh, we may never know. Okay, so abortion law. Few areas of policy incite stronger emotions than the, the that. Sorry, that, the, then. No. I don't know if that's like a typo or something or I'm just reading it wrong. Few areas of policy incite stronger emotions than the debate over abortion. It should be then. Uh, on the pro-life side, our arguments about the rights of the unborn child and arguments are often made from a religious standpoint. On the pro-choice side, there's the argument that the state should not have more say over what a woman does with her body than she does. Making any change to the state's position on abortion requires a hefty amount of political capital. Okay, so... This is where this, your political points come in for the turn. So this is our first term. We currently have uh, 26 uh, political capital or political points. Uh, it's going to cost us 26 if we want to raise this policy. So this slider. See, anytime I change the slider, it affects all of these areas. Now, we can see that in its current uh, value on demand, on demand abortions uh, is making the religious community absolutely fucking furious. Uh, and it's not uh, sitting too well with the conservatives either. However, the liberals love it. They love having on-demand abortions, apparently. Uh, so, uh, for us to raise this value, it's going to cost us 26 uh, political points. We can't raise it any more than it already is. It's going to cost us 19 points to lower it, uh, which is going to take a huge chunk out of what we can do this term. Uh, but that's okay. We want to start making uh, religious and conservative people at least somewhat happy with us. I'm not saying that we got to cater for them in the long term uh, at all, but we don't want them so upset that they're going to start doing foolish things like uh, like bombing parliament or uh, you know causing other problems. So if we slide this down, you can see uh, we can change the value to needing two doctors' approval, for for instance. So instead of being on demand, uh, we 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 lower the scale, and now two doctors will need to approve any abortion. Now that doesn't have like a huge impact on the positive here. So it, it's only like a fraction of a percent uh, lower for liberal um, satisfaction. But look at this. This is what our final outcome uh, for changing this policy is going to be with the religious faction. It's going to go take 
take us from minus 72.81% uh, unhappiness to minus 3.4%, which is actually very, very good. Uh, and it will cut uh, conservative, conservative dissatisfaction in half with this policy change as well. Uh, so to me, that makes sense. We're going to do it. Two doctors to approve an abortion in the real world. It depends where you live. I, I think that's a generally a pretty good thing, maybe more so than on demand. But uh, it, it's it's so hard to say. I, I'm just sliding this around to make numbers happy in this game. Uh, so don't read too much into it. Apply changes, yes. Uh, do we want to confirm using our political capital? Yeah, we do. There we go. We've lost 19 political points, as you can see up in the screen here. See, we've only got seven fists left. That doesn't leave us with a lot of points. Now, uh, a good thing to note about these points is that sometimes you can carry them through. I think there's a maximum amount of political points you can have in a turn. Uh, so depending on how many you're making, you may want to check this and see if you can get the maximum for each turn. Uh, so a way of doing that is by actually clicking on this, and we can see our whole cabinet. Look at this. Haven't even introduced the whole cabinet yet. Can you believe that? Poor cabinet. They just feel like totally left behind. Look, we've got this guy, Max Lee. He is our foreign affairs minister, Max Lee. Very handsome man. Look at that. He's got a uh, power suit on as well. He's very loyal. He has very little experience. And he's not overly effective. And he's sympathetic towards motorists and socialists. Good for you, Max. Uh, we also have Haley Bouchard. It's kind of nice. Uh, Bouchard is like a fairly common Canadian last name. Bouchard. It's like a, like a French Canadian last name. Uh, so already, I mean, Haley Bouchard is realistic. She's a realistic addition to our cabinet, our Canadian uh, cabinet. She is the welfare minister. She's very loyal. She's not overly experienced, and she's somewhat effective, I guess. Haley, I hope you don't take that the wrong way. I think you're very good at your job. She provides us with four uh, political fists every turn, uh, so that's very good. Uh it looks like we're getting uh, 26 um, capital per turn from our, our cabinet, coming back to what I was saying before. Uh, and then with this uh, capital that's currently available, we can add that onto the total. And I think it caps out at like 32 or whatever. It doesn't seem to be a maximum here, but I think that changes after the first turn is done. Uh, who else have we got? We've got John Gilmore, Minister for Industry. We also have uh, Tristan Gretzky. <laughs> What do you know? He's the Chancellor, Tristan Gretzky. Uh, you know, famously Wayne Gretzky's father. I don't know if you're aware of Wayne Gretzky. Uh, actually, this guy's probably about the same age as Wayne Gretzky, realistically. So it probably can't be his father. Maybe his brother. It's like his twin. It looks just like old Wayne. What about this? Oh, yeah. Gary Patel's mom. She's the uh, Public Services Minister. We also have William Kahn. Oh, my God. Law and Order Minister. It'll give us a perfect excuse to just scream the word con every time something happens uh, in the law and order arena and our transport minister is none other than noah oates what a guy look at that he's given us 4.3 man fists every turn i can't believe it he's extremely loyal and extremely inexperienced and uh, therefore not overly effective so good job noah oates well, we'll see how long your job lasts for. Probably not too long. Look, we can spend uh, 10 political fists to reshuffle the entire cabinet if we want. Uh, and we can also uh, individually fire Noah Oates if we wanted to. Uh, and hire from this pool of potential new ministers. Look at this. Noah Girard, for instance, could just replace Noah Oates. And, uh, and that would be fine. Also, Harold Gilmore. Look at this. What a fine, upstanding man. And, uh, and and Matthew Messier too. Messier, of course, also very French Canadian last name. Uh, and and all these other guys, John Bouchard, probably married to that other Bouchard. Can't even remember uh, what the is it. Was it this guy, Max Lee? No, it's her, Haley Bouchard. They're married. They're definitely married. Okay, great. That's the cabinet. Uh, we've made one. Uh, policy change to abortion law, uh, which is fine. We have seven man points left to work with. We need to start chipping away at some of these issues now as well. Uh, the, our next turn will make religious and conservatives fairly happy again. That'll be on the rise. Uh, we want to try to get rid of this rail strike. So let's click on the issue. Rail employers are not turning up to work. They're asking for greater investment in the rail network. Our rail system is currently paralyzed, which is causing total mayhem for business and huge resentment amongst commuters. Okay, so as we can see, uh, rail subsidies, uh, labor laws, and unemployment are all uh, working against this at the moment. Labor laws and unemployment uh, 
uh, and rail subsidies. There's nothing actually contributing to this, uh, but it is just on this start trigger. So our goal here to get rid of the rail strike is to bring this value, these this blue line of dots, down to the stop trigger, which is like this green line down here. Uh, so we need to start uh, negatively influencing uh, the rail strike through policies and other things. So, so far, rail subsidies is doing a, a fairly good job at bringing it down. Uh, labor laws uh, has a, like a little bit of fudge factor there. We could probably do something with that, maybe even with our seven political fists. Uh, and as we start to neg negatively influence this rail strike more, this blue line will start slowly creeping down until it gets to the stop trigger, and then we just get rid of the strike. So the effects of this rail strike are quite bad. Uh, so far, it looks like commuters are 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 6.9% uh, upset about this rail strike, uh, and you can imagine. You imagine you you were like trying to go to work or whatever, and you found out that there was a rail strike. I don't know about you. I would go into like total fucking meltdown mode. GDP uh, is being affected by this as well by 2.79%. We don't really want to negatively influence the GDP any more than we have to. Uh, so it's in our best interest to at least get rid of this rail strike. And hey, if that's the only thing that you do in five years, that's saying something. At least you get to the end of your five-year term and be like, yeah, well, remember that rail strike? I got rid of that. It took five years, but I still did it. I did something. Uh, and as we get rid of stuff like that, our popularity will increase and all that good stuff. Okay, so labor laws uh, was one of the things that was uh, having a negative influence on this rail strike. Uh, and we can probably see that in here somewhere. There it is. There's the stat. Minus 13.92% against the rail strike. Now, if I come in here and I start switching this around, I'm not going to be able to this turn, uh, so I'm going to have to come out of here anyway. I only have 7 uh, fist points. Uh, raise or lower is going to cost me 27 or 20, so I'm not going to be able to even do it this turn. Uh, but I will save my fist points for the next turn, come into labor laws, and probably adjust this so that it has more of an impact. So see, look, if I slide this down, I'm reducing the cost uh, in millions per quarter uh, of, of these uh, labor laws, uh, but it's also going to impact the working week. Now, that almost looks like it has some sort of positive impact on the working week, but actually uh, positively influencing the working week means that the working week becomes longer. So actually, people will have to work more, uh, which will make them upset and cause stress. And we could even get a new issue around like an epidemic of stress or something like that. So we have to be a little bit careful. We don't want to raise that too, too much. But we do want the rail strike to go away. Uh, and we want to be able to negatively influence as much as we can. Uh, wages, socialism, and trade unionist uh, membership all take a bit of a shit uh, from this policy change. Also, trade unionists in general will not be too happy and socialism uh, will take some sort of hit. Uh, but the uh, productivity of the nation and capitalists uh, will have like a little boost. They'll be a little bit happy. And of course, the working week will just take a little bit of a shit too. Uh, it basically means that everybody is now working on Saturdays as well as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, so you, if you're lucky, you get Sunday off, uh, but it's it's not too likely. Anyway, we can't do anything this turn. We've got seven uh, political fists left over. We're going to do it. My god, it's taken us a long time, but we're actually going to hit the next turn button. Uh, so far, the game has misinterpreted the Constitution, or that's what it's in the process of doing. We're ready to return to our government. Quarterly report. We've just actually finished our first quarter, and that should give you some sort of idea about how uh, slow-paced this game is. To me, that's fantastic. I love that. I love sitting around and thinking about what I'm doing uh, and just, just having a good, long, hard think about how my policies are going to affect people and stuff. I think that's great. Uh, we have an urgent policy question that requires my immediate attention, apparently, uh, on the topic of freedom of information. Hello? There have been calls for a law to increase the availability of information held on databases about citizens without their knowledge. Uh, these include the records held by private medical companies, insurance companies, and debt collection agencies, as well as information held by government departments. So, we can either reject this proposal or we can propose the Freedom Act. So, rejecting it means uh, that nobody likes the idea of the government holding information about them, but in some circumstances this needs to be done. The government isn't out to spy on everyone, but passing this law will just make it harder for the intelligence services to keep a watch on serious criminals and terrorists. It will also affect a large number of 
businesses who have customer databases who will be swamped with yet more bureaucracy. Uh, the alternative to this is proposing the Freedom Act, which uh, essentially says uh, that we have this law passed as it is one of the checks and balances required in any truly free society. The average law-abiding citizen should not be spied on or monitored by multinational corporations with computer databases, and the potential for abuse by government agencies if the citizens cannot view what data is being stored is huge. Uh, fine. We're going to propose the Freedom Act. We're going to rename our French fries Freedom Fries. We're going to propose this Freedom Act, and hopefully people will be hack ha hacky? They might get hacky about it. They might also be happy about it, which was what I meant to say. Uh, we have a minor budget deficit of $972 million. That's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. Uh, it's going to get a lot higher, but for now, it's okay. Um, it looks like our popularity has shot up a little bit. Only 36% of people intend to vote for us in the next election, which is up from, what, like 19% last quarter? Security briefing. It looks like the Human Rights Society says it actively encourages its members to oppose the current government because they're just a bunch of bastards. And uh, it looks like the loyalty of all of our ministers could best be described as trustworthy. So that's pretty good. Uh, effectiveness is generally considered to be adequate. Now, I don't know if you remember, when we were looking at cabinet, there were a lot of inexperienced bastards working in the cabinet. It was pretty awful, actually. Uh, but that's okay. We're going to go through here, and look. Look at that. Religious people, fairly happy now. Look at that. What a boost. They were right down in the dumps last quarter, and now they're, like, slowly gaining some, some ground with us, or we're gaining some ground with them. Uh, conservatives still marginally... Well, I'd say marginally... They're, they're pretty fucking pissed. But don't worry. We'll, we'll get them uh, eventually. We're going to have to bring down inheritance tax and stuff anyway because everybody seems to hate inheritance tax. Uh, and we got state employees, farmers, socialists, uh, and the retired all pretty happy with us. Let's take a look at and see how our rail strike is doing. No change from last time. We're going to implement a policy this time, though, that's going to have uh, an effect on the rail strike. And it looks like we have 33 man fists to work with this turn as well, which is very good. So our, our priority uh, this quarter is to deal with this rail strike. So let's do that now. We can change this labor law here. We wanted to bring it down slightly. Uh, we don't want to increase the working week too much, uh, but we would like to get a little bit more of a negative influencer on the rail strike. Uh, so let's do that. We're going to change this ever so slightly. The working week has shot up big time, uh, but we're going to negatively influence this rail strike. We're going to make a couple of people unhappy along the way, uh, but we're going to please capitalists and overall productivity of the nation by doing this. It's actually going to cost us 20 man points uh, to do this. Uh, but it's got to be done. John Gilmore is just staring at me, sort of saying, the hell are you doing, Prime Minister? Don't even think about doing this. Too late. It's too late, John. I've made my decision. We're done. We have 13 man points left for this quarter. Uh, these quarters are going to start to go a lot faster now. Uh, I say that. They probably are not, but uh, you never know. Uh, let's go into this light bulb here and look at policy ideas quickly before we, uh, before we wrap up. So... Foreign policy, welfare, economy, tax, public services, law and order, and transport. All the quadrants on the on the ball map uh, that we just came from. These are all things that you can put in that will potentially um, hinder or, or, or help you uh, in some sort of way. Community policing, uh, not a bad one. Uh, potential costs aren't too much either in the grand scheme of things. 125 to a potential 800 million. Uh, per quarter. It's going to take five quarters to implement, in, uh, implement this. I almost said influence, and then I said influence as, instead, which was kind of weird. Uh, but there you go. Uh, working with the community rather than attempting to control it. This is community policing, apparently. Community policing encourages the police to better understand the needs of the local community, especially in areas with ethnic minorities. Critics see it as an expensive waste of money, which could be spent on more direct methods to cut crime, like bazookas. Uh, you can actually give your police officers uh, bazookas, much like Robocop, and have them deal with crime that way. That's a very direct way of dealing with crime. However, we're going to opt for community policing uh, because it has good benefits amongst uh, ethnic minorities, uh, local communities, racial tension, all that sort of 
good stuff, uh, which we'll see. Uh, it does. It's going to take us five quarters to implement it anyway. Uh, but as we start impl implementing it, we'll start to see benefits from it as well. And look at it's 72% popular voters as well. So at least it'll give us a little popularity boost as well. So let's do it. We can afford it. It's uh, white up here, which means that we can actually put it in. Uh, these red ones, we don't have the political capital to imp implement. So we'll have to wait or save up for them. But community policing, definitely. Bam. It's in. William Kahn. I don't want that. I don't even look at me like that. Don't even look at me like that. I, it's going in. Look, the liberals are going to go absolutely crazy. They're going to be so fucking happy. They're going to have like some sort of party and everything to celebrate community policing. Also, liberalism in general will just increase uh, throughout the nation. Crime is going to take a hit, which is very good. Violent crime as well and racial tension all take a hit. Now, these are negative influencers on negative stats. Crime, violent crime and racial tension. So that's a good thing. And also, look at this. Community policing really helps get rid of alcohol abuse, which is another issue that we have in the Law & Order quadrant already anyway. Uh, it's going to really, really negatively influence that to the point where maybe we can get rid of it. Now, so far, it's going to cost us. We're going to have medium community policing. It's going to cost us $462.83 million a quarter. If we bring that up, look, everything just gets better. Look at that. Alcohol abuse racial tension, violent crime, crime, all negatively Im influenced and uh, liberals and liberalism just uh, are just going to be like in full party mode. It's going to cost us 12 man points to do this. Uh, it's actually going to be free to do this though because we've just implemented the policy. Let's go for it. It's going to cost us 800 million a quarter, but who cares? We're already in tons of debt. Why not just add more? Look, our deficit's still 972 million. That's going to go up by a further 800 million because of this policy that we just put in. And look, we still got 12 man points left to deal with fucking unbelievable it's so good all right let's wrap up there we've done a lot this episode a lot more than we did last episode anyway oh look at this bus usage has just decided to to appear out of nowhere um we have 12 man points left that we can deal with uh next episode and uh and we'll advance the turn as well and start getting through this term a little bit quicker now that we sort of understand what we're doing and uh what kind of things that we need to be thinking about and stuff look at that our popularity has gone up as well we're on the right track here i think we're doing everything right so far uh pff, that that means nothing in the grand scheme of things because by the end of five years we'll probably be attacked by godzilla and uh there'll probably be some sort of like toothpaste shortage across the world uh, which i'll be blamed for and, and and so on and so forth so we'll have to see but as usual thanks very much for watching stay tuned for the next one it'll be out soon uh and we'll start uh blasting through some of these quarters a little bit faster uh, i know this is a little bit slow paced but it's a pretty complex game, and uh, you want to make sure that you're doing everything at least somewhat right. Uh, and so far, I think we're doing an okay job. Uh, but you let me know, uh, as usual. Reddit, comments, all that good stuff. Alright, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time!